Dasinga wished to stop selling drugs, after he experiencing it for himself, he saw what it was doing to his people. He saw so many going to jail and prison for extended periods. When his firstborn son, Justin, was just a few months away from being born, he didn't know what to do. One ounce of cocaine was like a five-day stay in jail for white people, but one ounce of crack for our people, you had a minimum of five years. However, you can't make crack without cocaine. He was making good money, but the rewards were horrible. What do you do with a pocket full of money and can't buy a damn thing? So, he invested it all into music. Sabaoth appeared in his dreams, and he stopped because his conscience kept tormenting him, but it didn't take long before he started again because of hunger pains. He felt himself lose hope, depression set in and he started dabbling with harder drugs to kill his pain and frustrations. To be a drug dealer, you must be heartless, and most drug dealers soon became human, organ, weapons, and even sex traffickers. You see, money drives them and the more, the merrier. Dasinga's heart and conscience continued to bother him, and the embarrassment of admitting himself to a clinic for drug addiction outweighed his conviction of selling and harming others for monetary gain, not to mention the wrath of Sabaoth. He had nowhere to go because his friends all sold dope. He eventually started smoking with what they called back in those days, crack hoes, after two days. He thought he was a true crackhead. One day, he took some crack from a friend to sell, but instead, he smoked it himself. That night, living in an abandoned apartment, he found himself using the bathroom on the carpet because the toilet smell was too much to bear. As he got up, he didn't even wipe himself, a mirror stood in front of him, and he looked at himself in disgust. He heard a voice. It was Sabaoth who asked him, what are you doing? Look at you, ye of little faith. He didn't know what to do, but he was a veteran. He admitted himself to the local VA hospital as an addict, to be honest, that's what he would have been if he had not done so. This was when he met Ron Tyner. Ron was a slender, short man with a problem with alcohol and crack cocaine as well. This program was for 90 days, afterward, you were transferred to a halfway house for another 90 days. After the first 60 days of both programs, they were given weekend passes. Dasinga wasn't from there, and the only relative he had was his newborn son, Justin, and the mother of his child, who didn't allow him visitation except on Christmas and sometimes and not even then. One Saturday morning after breakfast, Ron approached him while Dasinga was taking a cigarette break, Yo, dude, our first sixty days are out of the way. Do you want to come with me to my brothers? We're having a barbecue. Dasinga's eyes lit up, hell yeah. I'm tired of being around here, especially on the weekend when I don't have to. While, en route, sitting on the bus, Ron was in deep thought and turned to Dasinga, Dasinga, I have something to tell you. Ron said as he continued. I know you agreed to come over to my brothers since you don't have family here in Atlanta, but I've been meaning to tell you something, and I. Guess you're about to find out today. Cause ain't no shame in my game. Dasinga was on the bus, with a confused look, what the fuck are you talking about, man? Spit that shit out. Ron laughed, my family is not my blood family, they're just friends, I've known for a long time, Dasinga said, for real. That's what you wanted to tell me, please. I got friends at home like that, that I too, call family as well, that's not a big deal. You act as if you're from a pack of wolves, and we're about to meet them. A smile quickly became a frown on Ron's face, what I'm trying to say, dude, I'm gay. Dasinga was surprised, you act like a man, dress like a man, and you don't have feminine ways, as far as I can tell. Ron had a serious look on his face as he explained, when I was in the army and stationed in Germany, I learned how to mask it, plus the motto was, don't ask, don't tell. So, they didn't ask, and I didn't tell, but I would go off base and party my ass off in Germany, literally. I was young and promiscuous as hell, and I eventually contracted AIDS. Once I discovered I had AIDS, I began to do more than alcohol and started in an out-of-control spiral motion since I felt it had handed me a life sentence. You only live once, so they say. Dasinga had mixed feelings of being confused, mad, 
and said simultaneously, Bitch, you ain't gay. Hold on, you have AIDS? For real man? That means, you finna die? Ron shook his head, nah, I thought so too, at least, no time soon. The doctor said, as long as I take my medicine, I'll be just fine until they stop working, that is. But for now, the medicine is keeping the symptoms, at bay. Ron hesitates for a minute, the reason I'm telling you is the place we are going is filled with men and women who are straight, gay, pansexual, or omnisexual. They won't mess with you, if you tell them you're not gay. They are great guys, except for Smithy. He's over the top all the time, but I've talked to my brother, he got to work today. And my brother, is the guy who owns the house, he's not my real brother, he's one of my lovers. Dasinga said. Damn. One of them, how many lovers, do you have, and do they know about your condition, or each other? Use a hoe. Ron laughed, damn right. But we use protection. There was silence between the two for a moment, and Ron said, if you want to go back, that's cool, but I thought you wanted to get away from that place for a while, and I was headed over here, plus this a barbecue, it ain't no damn orgy, if it were, I would not have even invited you. We will have food, music, and alcohol. However, I don't drink, of course, except for my O-Duels, but that's non-alcoholic. Dasinga just sat there on the bus, thinking for a moment. Hell, I'll go, cause we're almost there, but if one of the motherfucker looks at me sideways, I'm outta there. 